I'm down here in Southern Oregon with a good friend and mentor, Mr. Larry Carlin. He's been turning for a lot longer than I have. Um, he is a master sharpener and he has a lot of toys that I don't have in my shop, so I figured I'd give him a chance at stardom and let him show a few of his sharpening Start. techniques. Good show. Good show. Okay. I'll now be grinding a bowl gouge on the original bowl grinding jig that Sorby came out with years and years ago. I've been using it ever since it came out and I don't think anybody's improved on it to date. And that's about how long. A pass back and I'm done and I'm ready to go back to the lake. Again, I'm a wood turner, not a sharpener. So what we'll do is we start by setting the extension beyond the tool, right, 1.75 inches. I'll turn this on and we'll, I'll show you how long it takes to put a tool back right. I'm now going to grind a bowl gouge using the Veragrind 1 from One Way. I start by setting a, an inch and a quarter beyond the tool. Then I move the bar out to the 60 degree mark and I'm ready to grind. tool needed sharpening and it is now sharp and that's all it takes is a couple of rounds back and forth and we have a tool that's sharp and I can go back to the lathe. I'm not a sharpener, I'm a wood turner. I'll now convert this grinder from a 45 degree spindle gouge to a 60 degree bowl gouge. It's not very pretty but it works. Most of my bowl, most of my turning is bowl gouge. That sets it and it has a stop. We're, we're all set to grind bowl gouges. Grind the spindle gouge on the same grinder. I take the, the little spacer stop I put in there. That's for 60 degree bowl gouge. To do the spindle gouge, I take it out and go on in. The same amount of extension beyond the tool. Now we have a spindle gouge that I like to describe as scary sharp. So you see I use the same uh, extension beyond the tool and have stops that cause me to have to use things and make them repeatable. The reason it has to be repeatable is that tool steel is expensive and if you fall right back into the same bevel each time you're using up less tool steel. I'm now going to grind a spindle roughing gouge on the Sorby Pro Edge belt sharpener and it's ground straight across on the end 45 degrees and I rolled it on here to, to grind it. reason I use it, it gives me a long flat bevel on some of my products I want that long flat bevel because I turn it up and make a shearing cut and it makes it, it's nearly as smooth as a, a skew and I don't have to reach down and pick up a skew in the process. The Sorby Pro Edge uh, sharpener 
is very good in the repeatable repeatability era because that is absolutely right on repeatable in any of these holes. To change it, you just move it up and down and if the next time you're grinding that tool, you want that same angle, you go to the same hole and it is right on. Can't miss. I'll now show you how I set the bevel angles on the, the few tools that I freehand whip on. And as a result, you really want to be able to come back and fall into the same bevel. Repeatability is again my byword. My 25 degree bevel set setting jig and that's pretty ugly the only thing that's really good about that is that it works now that's set at 25 so if i wanted to use a the grind the bottom of a negative rake scraper i would use the 60 degree the way that would work is i would go back down again back out a little here to give myself a little more room. Flat on there and these two points touching the wheel, tighten it up and I've set it 60 degrees and it's a repeatable angle time after time. And what I've done in order to do this, to make these, I start out by if I wanted a 60 degree one I'd come and draw an arc there, cut it out on the bandsaw, and it, after that then I relieve it in here so that it will compensate for wheel wear. That's how I get repeatability on a, an adjustable tool rest.